After a fantastic adventure down south, Daryl is now back with Ryan and Jesse on our own Grant Tank restoration. This week, we're going to be summarising our progress so far, testing out the engine for the very first time, and fixing up a vision port. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. Jesse has been away this week, so Daryl is going to go over some of the work he's been up to. Since we got back from that exciting episode of tracking down those tanks, we've been steadily pushing through on the our grant that we're working on. And uh, while I was away, Jess started on the uh, commander's cupola at the, in the top of the turret, and he's had to pull that all apart. It was all full of dust and dirt, so he spent quite a bit of time on that, and he's done a magnificent job. He's still working on the hatches, but it's going to be absolutely brilliant once he's finished. A beautiful brass fitting here. It's like a handbrake to slow the turret from turning. When you, when you want to spin it around, you can slow it down. And then that'll lock in. See how it's locked in? And that stops it from spinning around. See how it just jumped into it? That's in a locked position. And as you move around, you can just grip this and it'll pull up tight and slow the movement. So it's, it gives the commander something to turn the turret ring with. Just, just has done it all. He's done a great job. Just heating up and loosening things off. You have to get all these bolts out. But uh, the, the slotted head bolts, that was a bit of an effort. This is the point for the 30 cal machine gun for the mounting. And these are actually the handles that actually lock the turret uh, doors open and closed. Unfortunately, on the, a lot of American vehicles, they use slotted head bolts. Oh. So it's always a bit of a struggle to get them out, but Jess has managed to get them all out. Wonderful job. But this is what we're talking about here. This is, this is being crushed. So Jess's next job will just to be trying to heat that up, bend it, straighten it out a bit, just to make it look a bit neater. This is the little petrol generator that uh, goes in the tank on the side here to give power to the turret. Pretty sure it's home light. Heater, generator. Home light corporation. What's home light? Home light, that, they still made uh, motors and that into the 70s and 80s, I think, home light. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we're still in the process of uh, tidying this up, but what's good about this is still, still got the original fuel line that went up to the fuel tank that sits just above it. The electrical cables that would have connected it to uh, supply the power. You know, a bit more authenticity. Yeah, it still turns over. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, still. But are we going to use this? Are we going to get it running? No, we're not going to get it running because it's just not worth the effort for what we, we need. But, you know, it's, it's, it's going to sit in this tank and be there for if we ever need it again. This is a little exhaust that, that goes off this generator. There's a little muffler in there. Exhaust muffler. So that bolts onto there in the tank. And then all the exhaust gets channeled into the... This is the firewall and this is where the motor is. So where I'm sitting is where the engine you, you'll is. You'll be sitting in the engine compartment, yeah. Wow. We're in the turret now and the other thing that Jess got stuck into where I was away is was making all these little baskets and fittings that we didn't have. This is what he's used as a rough guideline as to work on. We've got a little lamp holder. Then we've got what would have been spare periscopes. Then a case prismatic pr projector scopes. A place for the uh, binoculars. Come across to the radio. Spare parts for the radio underneath. And swing around more. It would have been another box for uh, spare wireless transmitter valves things like that there's obviously another lamp fitting over here because it matches the other one so fair bit of effort and work going into it a little bit more to do or we're we gonna probably leave it there well like, like we mentioned probably leave it there we don't want it too crowded people like to get in and, and move around we don't want them getting injured this is our ride tank so yeah yeah i'm starting to work out how all the 37 mil gun goes together we, the, the tank didn't come with one these are a couple of parts out of Jono's that we were requiring. These two parts, a side plate and the actual uh, rail that the gun fits and works on. And then this is the machine gun uh, ammo rack. So the ammo box gets slid in here, the belt ammunition comes across, and then on one side of the rotor, you can see where the 30 cal goes through. So your 37 mil here, then you've got a 30 cal gun. So this basically sits on top of the gun like that. Oh wow. It even feeds the gun, the machine gun. And this mantlet here that out of Jono's, it must have come off a tank that was uh, being put on display and someone had welded this in place in the turret. You can see. Oh. So that's all, oh, all no. welding in that. So we'll have to tidy that off, clean that off. 
to use it. So That's a lot of work there, man. Yeah, that actually fits inside what's called the rotor that goes inside this. See the mounting points here? There's one, two, three. One, two, and three up there. We found one of these in John O's shed, but luckily we already had one. It's the elevation wheel for the 37mm gun. This actually, this part here, once again solid brass, actually fits on the rotor here. And then this corresponds with this cog wheel here. So that goes in there and when you turn that, when it's all fixed in place, you'll see this move up and down. And that's for the elevation of the gun. What we'll do is when we get to the stage of fitting, this will probably do another video on it, showing everybody how it goes together. All, going, all putting it together. Yep. That would be great. Yep. It is tad heavy. Right, so it's another little generator, Daryl. Yeah, this is the one we got from Jono. And actually, we've got, still got a queen up a bit, but it actually sits on here, these four mounting points here. Under the chair. Under the chair, yep. Pretty heavy. This gets mounted in there. So once again, just something else we've managed to pick up from Jono's. Just give our customers and, and the people that come to look at it uh, a bit more of an idea. Yeah. Once we sat down and had a good look at what we were able to get out of Jono's, there's almost three complete tanks there. So instead of stealing parts off them, we had other bits we could use for this, so that's what we've gone and done. So what do you, what, what do you got with these doors then? Well, once again, we've had to fit locks to them. And a friend of ours down south that's helping us out a lot has uh, supplied us some pre-made locks that he's uh, had manufactured. So we're just fitting locks to the doors so we can lock them. Because these, these holes weren't drilled, were they? No, nah, these holes weren't drilled. I'm beginning to think they might have been old stock that we got that, that were to be modified for when you needed them. You can make them left to right. And that's the only thing that comes to mind. Yeah. So we had to drill through. So we found the easiest way to drill through this armor was from the inside out. Because it feels like the arm is only for the first, or the, arm, the, the uh, conditioning or the hardening of the You're armor kidding. is only the last first two or three mil on the front. So we found them quite easy to drill from the back, which was amazing. All the hatches working. So there's a little little trick to these uh, actually hatches. There's a little stop here. I don't know if you can see it. We didn't realise it until we started pulling them apart. It goes up and it locks into place. And then you can pull this down and fold the handle out of the way. Wow. A lot of, lot of, it's really technical. Like A lot of work went into it, a lot of thought. A lot of engineering. Yeah. So, and then we had to, when we had to go pull them apart, they're all rusted. We're trying to work out what goes where. Luckily the manuals there give you a, a bit of a drawing of an idea. So. It, it all worked out in the end, so... So how do you get it to... Well, you've got to take a bit of the weight, pull, pull that out, spring load, and then lock it back down. This catch will catch into the little lock there. And then to fold it out of the way, so... Remarkable. Daz and Jess aren't the only ones who've been busy. Resident mechanic Ryan has been hard at work on the engine, electrical wiring and drive lines. It looks like today we'll be ready to fire it up for the first time. We do have a light switch. Um, one of these is fans, our thermo fans. One's, a, one's our light switch because we are going to run lights on the vehicle, like a running light, so we're going to be able to turn them on and off. Um, so we've got our start button. Uh, we've got our uh, newer gauges with all our new senders and all that. We've got, you know, volts, oil pressure, water temp. Uh, the original amp gauge, we're not using that. Um, we've got our main battery isolator. Just a light to let us know that the engine's on. And then we've got over here our main fuel shut off. So when we want to turn the vehicle off, we'll pull on that one. We'll pull it out. It's connected to a cable that runs up and down here. And this one here is our air flap. So pretty sure they call it emergency air shut off. Um, so that one there is for um, you know a runaway situation or something like that where we need to if you're really in yeah, strife. That's right. Now we are going to try and fire it up, see if it comes to life. So we've got fuel in the system and we'll, get, we'll prime it up. We've just got this here, dummied up for now, just to, just to help prime the, the fuel through. And we'll get rid of that later. New oil and fuel filters. Um, so same thing with the transmission. We've changed the transmission oil. Um, 
What else? Ah, uh, whole heap of wiring. There was a whole heap of wi new fresh wiring there that we've done. And Jess and Daryl have obviously installed it and bolted everything in. This little primer bulb here um, to prime it up. These things do have a mechanical fuel pump that runs off the supercharger. Uh, once once it's running, we don't need an electric lift pump. It's, a, it's got its own lift pump on there to supply, supply the engine with fuel. Um, this is just going to help us get the fuel through all these fuel lines we've got and up ready to go so we're not cranking it over for too long. Coming now, we've got our fuel tap on. So first thing is obviously we'll um, turn the isolator on. So we've got power now. Um, and I think, yeah, so that's the thermo fan, is that one? Oh wow. That's what cooling. Um, and then next thing is, is to just start it. Should be good to go, yeah. We'll see what happens. I'll jump in here and I'll just show you how to operate yep. this anyway. It's nothing going to go anywhere because nothing's connected. And that That's just a battery. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. going to keep running. So this one here, if you pull it and hold that out. Right, so um, to turn it off. Yeah, keep use that one. That's why I made it close. Turn the isolator off and then pull that. Or? Doesn't matter. You keep it on. Turn the engine off with that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's crank. Yep. Crank button. So you got to have the isolator on. Yep. To crank it. Um, I just got to jump in the back and just give it some throttle. So we can get it started. Oh. That's a jump, little jump starter. Yeah. That's just going to help us out. All right. All right, Daryl, just turn that isolate, isolator on. Isolator on. Fingers clear. Yep. Hang on a sec. Smells good. <laughs> Got a whiff of that. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep cranking it, then it should should fire hopefully. So. Thanks, Daryl. <laughs> no worries. I did the easy bit. <laughs> Push this, turn that. <laughs> hey, that that looked good. Yeah. Did, did it seem okay? Seemed fine. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of smoke. <laughs> so that's just because we don't have an exhaust to yeah, direct it away. Right. That's just coming straight to the turbo. So next we are going to hook up this transmission. So we've got to um, try and make something so we can select it into into gear. But then we've got the the, the braking uh, levers. We're going like, to connect those up. I'm um, going to put the drive shaft in. Um, we'll have to get the seat in there so we can physically sit in, sit in there and try and drive it. And then once that's in, we can try and um, get it into gear and try and move it then. Go for a bit of a test drive. Maybe we'll just do one, a little one in the workshop first because we still got the turret and everything to put on. We'll see how it turns and all that sort of stuff. And then if we're happy with it, um, we'll take it out and maybe do a, do a lap, hot lap in it and see how it goes. Yeah. Before we finish up for this week's update, Daryl has an important piece to prepare and test fit. Well, what we've got here is a uh, vision port. The one in here has been fixed in position. So obviously when the, whoever did the hull up before we got it, just said, oh, we'll just whack it in there and, and weld it in place. Well, we actually have a very good condition one that we've still got to clean up a bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off these welds that are here, cut off the bolts that are holding it, because they're too short for what we want anyway. We'll double check that this fits and then uh, tie him up and he'll be ready to go.
missing all the other bits, as you can see. Oh. But they've just had had one piece, that, that bit there. They've just stuck it in there just because they, they had it, but they didn't have all the other bits and pieces. So we've got this nice piece, so it goes back in. Americans used a lot of slotted screws and because they've been in there for 80 years, they're extremely hard to get out. Now, this one is actually a nice one, but you find that they rust around here on the, the taper, extremely hard to get out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in brand new bolts. Once we go to the final fit it, we'll weld this off, put a weld in there, and then we'll cut a new slot on it. We'll put them in with some anti-seize and they'll come out really good. It's like they've welded a piece in here. See the weld going across the, the tape, so I might have to countersink and see there and there. Might have to tidy up the holes with a, with a bigger drill. This is where Curtis come into his own. He might have to help me here. What? <laughs> <laughs> Just don't drop it on Dazza. All right, I'll try. I'll try. Um. Are you holding that? I'll tidy this up. I'll, I'll uh, come back in here and prep all this where we've taken the paint off. You know, touch that up. up. And then uh, this will get all painted up. We'll clean it, it's in the degrees and then paint it and that'll be ready to bolt in. It's one of the last things we do. Having all these things in the way, we try and put them in last so we're not knocking our heads and that on them. So, yeah, it just makes life easy. Perfect. Thanks, Daz. No worries, mate. That's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and I'll see you on the next one.